I haven't got a nickel to my name. The wolf and I are just about to meet. But rich or poor, your pocketbook's the same. When your heart's on easy street. The only clothes I own are out of press. My only pair of shoes are not so neat. But you can do with just a little less. When your heart's on easy street. Do 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 I want with money another name for worry and care My life is milk and honey Have you ever seen a happy millionaire Philosophy is effective in a way It makes you think the world is mighty sweet You get a new perspective every day when your heart's on easy street, what do I want with money? Another name for worry and care. Oh, my life is milk and honey. Have you ever seen a happy millionaire? Complaining never does a bit of good. And smiling is a trick that can't be beat. You're living in a lovely neighborhood. When your heart's on easy street. All right, partner. Stretch your muscles and reach for it. Higher. Where's your gun? I haven't got a gun. I haven't any money either. If that's what you're after. What is this, a hold up? Well, what do you think it is? I got a gun on you, haven't I? Now step back and keep him up. I'm stealing your horse. No, you're not. I need him. Oh, yeah? Well, I need him a lot worse than you do. There's a posse hot on my heels, and I'm in a desperate mood. Why, I'm a rough, tough, fighting mad grizzly. <laughs> a grizzly? You look more like a teddy bear to me. What happened? Oh, nothing. Just a little saloon brawl. But that's the way it is in this town. One cross look down your nose, and boom, they clap you right in jail. Hey, you put your hands down, didn't you? Sure, I'm tired. Well, put them up. Looks like you woke, partner. One more move and you're dead. Off that horse by then, you're completely dead. One, two, three, four. Get down, will you? Five, six. I counted a six, did you hear that? Do I hear seven? Eight, nine. I'm sorry I had to get rough, Teddy Bear, but you sort of had me on a spot. Ah, nice work, fella. There's a reward for capturing him, and it looks like you'll get it. Capturing who? You don't mean my pal Teddy Bear here. Pal? You two guys don't look very chummy. <laughs> you mean this? Well, he was just showing me his new gun. Yeah, I was just showing him. Quiet, you. Oh, so you two are buddies, eh? Maybe you both better come along with us then. We've got a nice cell reserved for guys like you. All right, climb on that horse and let's get going. Doggone it. If we have to ride these two fellas into town, we'll miss the big shindig at the Adams Ranch. Yeah, it's going to be a swell show, too. Old man Adams hired some swell talent for the party this year. Sorry, we've got to take in all bakers. Hold on a minute. You fellas blew off the handles so fast, you didn't give me a chance to explain. Explain what? Teddy Bear and I were hired to entertain at this party at the uh, uh, Adams Ranch. Entertain? Me? Why, sure, no party would be complete without your golden voice. Well, if that's the case, us fellows will give you an escort right to the Adams Ranch. Well, that's darn nice of you, but Chuck, you don't need to go to all that trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Of course, if we find out you're lying about this job, we'll just have to give you another escort back to the city jail. Hey, hey, it's a great day, celebrate, day, yes, Don't say it's a great day, it's a great day.
thanks and a big round of applause to my good boss and your good friend, Mr. Better Hundred Adams. They just don't grow them that handsome. The Morales family does. That's one, Dad's foreman. Instead of a speech, I'm going to do a little bragging. You all know that my daughter, Kim, has been doing pretty well on the stage. And I'm not denying that I'm proud of her. So why shouldn't I show her off? Kim, I know this is sudden. But how about a song for the folks? Unflattered, bewildered, and befuddled no end. This reception is really too much. Now, I'll tell you a story that I hope you'll enjoy. A song with an old-fashioned touch. They still talk about her in Podunk. The lady who never returned. She's ruled conversation for three generations. I'll give you as much as I've learned. She arrived into town on a Friday or Saturday. I may be wrong, but I think it was the latter day. Speaking of her, they refer to the girl with the high button shoes. What her name was to this day is still quite a mystery, but she's a character in local history. Wives give a sneer when they hear of the girl with the high button shoes. She was some stuffin', she had the fellas puffin', she was the weekend rage. Even grandpappy and grandma wasn't happy at his age, at his stage. When she walked on a Sunday, they all up and followed her. Then on a Monday, the earth up and swallowed her. Each local gent would have gone where she went, but she left no clues. Whatever became of the girl with the high button shoes? She arrived into town on a Friday or Saturday. I may be wrong, but I think it was the latter day. Speaking of her, they refer to the girl with the high button shoes. What her name was to this day is still quite a mystery. But she's a character in local history. Wives give a sneer when they hear of the girl with the high button shoes. Sunday, they all up and followed her. Then on a Monday, the earth up and swallowed her. Each local gent would have gone where she went, but she left no clues. Whatever became of the girl with the high button Giving you up. Oh, Adams. I have a hard time getting away from those army buyers. 
A lot of work to selling cavalry horses. You know that. Or do you? Oh, I may be a little rusty, but I'll soon get into the swing of it. I've been saying that for five years, and every year I walk off with a contract. Monotonous, ain't it? But you're due for a change. You can't beat my new herd. They've got tough stamina. Yes, and beauty, too. You try to sell me, try to sell the army. Why, Jingo, I will sell them. Bet a hundred? No, sucker money. Don't want it. Well, Kim must be looking for me. Why, did she lose you? There's nothing lost around here but cavalry contracts and perhaps a few loans. I'll be able to pay all my creditors as soon as I make this sale. And you're at the top of the list, Brock. I'm not worrying. Maybe not. But something's got you mighty disquieted. Oh, uh -uh, not any longer. There she is. Hello, Broadway. Hello, Main Street. Still killing the local people? Without any effort at all. I'd really knock myself out for one small city girl. Oh, I've got a career on my mind. If that's all the competition there is. I'll resort to bribery. Take me and I'll throw in the whole town of Buckaroo. You could do it, too. You practically own this town, don't you? My little backyard. Why don't you stay out here and play in it? How about Broadway? Uh, maybe I could make you forget it. You birds start chirping. Well, you see, uh, uh, we didn't bring our duet music with us this time. Uh, Roy sings prettier alone. You flatter me, Teddy Bear. Uh, flatten you. Well, howdy. See, I'm well known around here. Hello? Do you? I'm not too well known. All right, get singing. Well, how can it till they get to playing? Roy, how will they know what you're going to sing? The trick is, will I know what they're going to play? We're in. didn't seem prone to argue with you singing. Miss Kim? Adam's daughter. Oh, you mean Kim. That miss kind of threw me off. Oh, allow me. I insist. You, uh, you know Kim pretty well? Sure. She told Mr. Adams if he didn't hire me to sing, she'd call the party off. Your song was a very pleasant surprise. Well, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Adams was going to introduce me, but Kim thought it'd be better if I'd just sneak up on him. I almost ran him in for vagrancy, not knowing, of course, who he was. I still don't know him. Well, that's a coincidence. I don't believe I know you either. I'm Brock Danvers. 
a friend of Kim Adams. Well, if Kim okays you, you're all right with me. I better see if I can find her. I don't want to get away without seeing her. You won't get away, or you either. I'm afraid you're not getting away with uh, whatever you're trying to get away with. I'm Kim Adams. That's all, brother. Just as I thought. A couple of saddle tramps. I'll have them in the jug in a jiffy. What for? Vagrancy. We don't tolerate it around here. Aren't you being a little severe, bro? I'm sorry, kid. But I'm a businessman. Well, we're businessmen, too. I'm a, uh, uh... What am I? Horse I'm a horse wrangler. Roy, here's a, a, a baritone. And right now, business is at a standstill. It's about to pick up. Dad would be very happy to pay you for entertaining our guests. And when one has money, one isn't a vagrant. But Kim's... Yeah, that's only one. Oh, Dad has scads of horses. I imagine most of them need wrangling. Kim, I just can't find the right words to say. Well, you ought to have plenty of those. You certainly said all the wrong things back there. Will thank you cover everything? Mm, not quite. Do you have any ulterior motive in coming here? Only that I didn't want to get pinched before I had a chance to look for a job. Oh, I see. Then your only crime is being a fast talker. Well, we're honest, Miss Kim. A couple of honest fellas don't deserve no jailing, especially that buckaroo jail. That's the worst clink I ever spent a night in. Miss Kim. Government buyers are here to see the horses, and your father would like to have him present. Oh, thank you. Uh, Juan, I just hired these boys. I want you to put them to work. Work? This is Mr. Um... Rogers. Oh, yes, Mr. Roy Rogers. He's a very handy baritone. Excuse me. Oh, aren't they cute? Here, pony, 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 pony. Cute. I'll have you know, ma'am, that's the finest string of horses that's ever been raised in Buckaroo. They're fine-looking animals, Mr. Adams. With the proper training, the cavalry could use a bunch like that. Bet a hundred. You better save your money. <laughs> Magnificent animal. Yes, triggers the prize of my string. I got him while he was running with a wild herd. Dad, you sure collect the darndest things. My daughter knows very little about horses. And that I'm trying to forget. I'll tame him down. You'll never get near enough for that horse to tame him down. There you go again. Rock underestimating me. Why, I can ride him this minute. That calls for a bet. I know your superstition bet 100, but this time, let's make it a real bet. Superstition be hanged, 300. I've got 500, says you can't ride him right now. Put up that talk and money. All right, it's a bet. Go ahead. Figure you and I are going to earn some easy money. You got a bet on Mr. Adams? Yes, 500. Rock Danvers says that I can't ride him. He's leery. The trigger will show up his horses. Is he selling to the government, too? Not this year. That string of mine will make him eat crow. Trigger, you're the handsomest horse I ever laid eyes on. You know, I've been dreaming all my life about owning a horse like him. Well, if you ever do, young fella, remember that a fine horse is a gentleman. Treat him that way. Give him your respect and friendship. Say, who are you? Oh, I'm just a visiting wrangler. Well, stick around. We'll get along together, son. Go on. Throw a saddle on, Trigger. I got me a bet with Danvers. Gentlemen, your job has begun. Saddle Trigger so Mr. Adams can collect that bet. Is that all you got to do around here to win a bet? Is saddle a horse? No, I'm going to ride him. Oh. You sure he's ready to ride? No, but I aim to find out. Here we go. Back to work again. Saddling up a lot of trouble. Oh, my dad can ride anything on four feet to a finish. That's exactly what I'm interested in, the finish. Well, this one's going to cost you exactly $500. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa! 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 Come on! It's going to take a lot of handling. Oh. Oh. Right up, cowboy, and good luck. Step up on it, Mr. Adams. Yeah, I'm glad 
that I'm sitting on the ground. Friends, the Wranglers. Come. You won your bet, Danvers. Yeah, I guess I did. It's Trigger. Trying to steal the mares. He's a smart horse. Hey, next time you ride me, take off your spurs. Well, we got him anyway. Yeah. You better get rid of that horse. Miss Kim don't want him around. Yeah, she'll be sore as blazes. Well, I've got an idea she'll change her mind. Mr. Adams thought a lot of Trigger, and I don't think he'd want him running wild without a home. Come on, boy. I'm going to put you back in your private corral. Out of the way, bub. Hey, Roy. I'll get rid of him. You wait here. Is he bossing this outfit, Miss Kim? Why not? He runs everything else. Well, I don't know anything about running a horse ranch. Well, don't take no lessons from Brock Danvers. He'll learn you wrong. All right. Come on. Here he comes, the great lover of horses. Yeah. All right, Rogers. We'll get rid of that horse. You better put that thing away because you're not going to use it. Did you ever see anyone shoot a horse? Well, it isn't a pretty sight. You wouldn't like it. Go back to the house, Kim. It's all right, Brock. He killed my father. I talked to your father just before. He said that a fine horse was a gentleman. Give him your friendship, he said. Well, right now, Trigger needs a friend. Maybe Mr. Adams was sort of electing me for the job. Well, I'm gonna get this over with. I told you to put that gun away. Look out, Mr. Danvers, he'll hurt you. I'll shoot him for you. What are you shooting, ducks? I'm sorry I shoved you, but I had to save your life. That horse is dangerous. I'll take my own chances, if you don't mind. Well, all right. You fellas know what's good for you. You'll clear out of this country. That's another thing he said. Stick around. We had quite a chat, Mr. Adams and me. Well, I'm going to get that horse. Come on. Listen, Juan, we can't let Trigger be killed. Mr. Adams loved him. Perhaps so, Roy, but I... I know you're thinking he can't be handled, but you're wrong. All Trigger needs is someone who understands him. What do you say we give him a break and prove that he's really okay? Maybe Trigger didn't lose his best friend after all. Where will we find him? The most likely place is the water hole in Tejon Canyon. That's where Denver's will look for him. We'll look first. There is the water hole. Yeah, and there he is, hiding behind those rocks, waiting. Hey, Roy. Here they come.
cut rope in, Roy. Hey, we better be moving out of here. We're too close to where that bunch is waiting. All right. Hit the road. Hot job! <laughs> Go that way. We'll follow them. Probably skipped out from the herd and watched us go by. Yeah, probably. Well, we may as well go back to the ranch. All right, for now. But I'm coming back. I don't give up easy. Persistent cuss, ain't he? Well, what are you going to do with him now? One, do you know any place where we can keep him out of sight for a while? Yes. There is another spring back in these hills. Well, that's where we'll take him. What you going to feed him on, rocks? <laughs> Don't you know the state of your father's affairs? Why don't you get out from under? Take my offer. Sold to Brock Danvers. One broken down ranch and a bumper crop of debts. They'll be paid in full. I know why you're doing this, Brock. Of course you do. My romantic charms having failed, I'm trying to impress you with my generosity. How am I doing? Well, you're gaining on me with a devastating burst of speed. As soon as the necessary papers have been drawn up, the Adams Ranch will be sold to Brock Danvers. That's the way it's going to be, boys. Well, they didn't exactly give Brock a vote of confidence. Talk to them, Juan. Tell them that I haven't any interest in the ranch, that it's best this way. For the daughter of my friend, I would do anything. But since you'll not be needing me, there is no reason to stay on. But, Juan, there will be a great deal to do, and Mr. Danvers will want to make changes. Hiring a new foreman will be the first big step in that direction. Now I'll have no job, and the settlement will have no reason for the fiesta. <laughs> you mean they celebrate the fact that you're working? <laughs> no, to pay tribute to the Adams Ranch at the beginning of the training period of the horses. Oh. It's bad to break a custom. Superstitious? Just disappointed that Miss Kim so easily for this tradition. Will you tell your friends to go right ahead with the shindig? She'll be there. You know, Brock Danvers wouldn't have a chance at that cavalry contract if you'd buckle down and carry on with the ranch. Never mind the pep talk, Coach. It doesn't mean a thing to me. But you were born and raised out here. It's your home. Oh, it's just a batch of mortgages and debt. Brock is willing to assume all obligations and cancel Dad's indebtedness in return for the ranch. Nice guy. I think so. He kind of likes you, too. <laughs> That's a gross understatement. He's slightly crazy about me. Thinking of marrying him? Trying with the idea. But then that presents another problem. And I don't like them. That's why I'm selling everything and leaving Buckaroo flat. It's the easiest way out. I think I will have a look at that statue of your great-grandpa. I want to see if it's blushing. Boys are 
Don, where do those two go every afternoon? I know. Teddy Bear told me. But he said he'd knock me for a loop if I told you Roy was planning to knock you for a loop. With what? A horse. A big, blonde horse. Climb in one. Juan, why didn't you tell me about this? Maybe because Roy wanted to give Trigger a chance to prove himself to you. has the makings of a quiz kid. Troy tried to tell you. Trigger is the best horse on the range. Perhaps now you're convinced. Donna, who just arrived? Shall we quit now? No, we just as well wait and get fired. Don't you think you're wasting a lot of time on that horse? Well, yes, but I sort of figured now that you're running things, you'd kind of string along with Trigger. He's worth it. He's got everything. Spirit, endurance, jumping ability, speed, and... And a good press agent. He don't need one of those. From those rocks up there, down to the end of the road, it's exactly one-eighth of a mile. Check the time. seem to be pretty sure of yourself jumping him over my car. Well, I'm just sure of Trigger. Give her a kiss, Trigger. Come on, kiss her. Come on, give her a kiss. <laughs> you win, Roy. <laughs> we'll turn him in with the others to complete his training. Well, Trigger, we've finally been forgiven. Come on, smile, Trigger. Smile. <laughs> Big. <laughs> Did you teach him politeness to him? I didn't have to. He's just naturally a gentleman. Oh. <laughs> well, you'd better take lessons from Trigger. I thought you'd agree to my taking over the ranch. That's the easy way out. If you marry me, your worries will be over. How about it, Broadway? No, it's Main Street for me. I belong there. Change your mind. Vanity, mostly. I want to find out if I can wear bronze. Well, you've been swell to have for a friend. If you won't marry. <sighs> no, I would have if... It's him. Pick the horses for the race tomorrow. Would you like to look them over? You still around, Rogers? Sure, I'm working for Miss Kim. Roy took over the training of the horses. Juan says with the job that he's done that we'll have the cavalry contract in the bag. One sort of a dream, Mr. Danvers. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of a methodical guy. The last five years, I've gone after that contract and gotten it. We can't blame him for that, Roy. No. Best we can do is upset his schedule. You're going to have real competition with Trigger in the race tomorrow. You riding him, Rogers? Sure. I don't suppose you'd wish me luck. As a matter of fact, I will. Because you're going to need it. The conditions of this race are in conformity with the plan we discussed. Now, in addition to the various jumps and slides, you will take your horses through a simulated gas attack and combat zone. Now, Brock Danvers will act as captain for the black team, and Roy Rogers of the Adams Ranch will captain the white team. That is all, gentlemen, and may the best team win.
teams ready? Ready. Ready. Open the gate. Miss Adams, signed, sealed, and delivered. If only Dad were here to see this, he'd be the happiest man in 48 states. And even more proud that his daughter came through with flying colors. It's been a pleasure to do business with you, Miss Adams. And I'm looking forward to my yearly visit here. Well, Mr. Ames, you can't leave now. Why, I insist that you stay here as my guest for our celebration. Celebration? Just another one of Dad's traditions. If our luck was good, then he always insisted that we celebrate. But if it was bad, then it was time to stage a big party to forget our troubles. I accept with the greatest of pleasure. Well, Juan, do you think your friends could help me put on a party that, that Dad would be proud of? Sort of, well, sort of hands across the border. I'm sure they'll be happy to miss Kim. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Say hello and 
and I are just about to meet, but rich or poor, your pocket looks the same, when your heart's on easy street, the only clothes I own are out of press, my only pair of shoes are not so neat, but you can do with just a little less, when your heart's on easy street, what do I want? Another name for worry and care Oh, my life is milk and honey Have you ever seen a happy millionaire? 
complaining never does a bit of good. And smiling is a trick that can't be beat. You're living in a lovely neighborhood. When your heart's on the easy street. Great. <laughs> Simply fine. Thank you. And you, you were out of this world. May I shake your little hand, maybe? Thank you. It's a friendship paper. 